quadratic equations. They have the form a times x squared plus b times x plus c equal to zero. In this video, a, b, and c are real numbers. And the goal of the video is to show one how to solve these equations by three methods. The first method will be factoring. The second method will be using the quadratic formula. And the third method will be using completing the square. We will learn first how to factor tuples in order to learn how to factor quadratic forms. We start off with 1, 4, 3. 3 is in the 1's position, 4 is in the 10's position, and 1 is in the 100th position. We want to break up 1, 4, 3 as 1, a times 1, b. Now the rules for multiplying 1, a and 1, b are below. Okay, the red one times the blue one. 1 times 1 is 1. That's the 1 in the 1, 4, 3. Okay, now, the 3, that needs to be A times B, and that's last times last is last. So the last times last in the 1 comma A and the 1 comma B is the last in the 3 tuple below, and that's A times B. Now, the middle number is going to be A times the blue one, that's called innies, and the B times the red one, that's called Odies. And the middle number is innies plus odies. So our problem has now become, since a times 1 is a and b times 1 is b, a, that's a plus b, what two numbers does one multiply to obtain 3 and you add them to get 4? Well, that would be 1 and 3. 1 times 3 is 3 and 1 plus 3 is 4. You could also say A is 3 and B is 1. The order is not important. Factoring quadratic polynomials. Now, P print X print. That's read P of X. And it's equal to AX squared plus BX plus C. As a tuple, P of X is equal to A comma B comma C. And then we're given the problem factor p of x, where we have it's equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6. The factoring has to do with the numbers 1, 5, and 6. It has nothing to do with the x. So we write 1, 5, 6. We ask ourselves the question, what two numbers do you multiply together to get 6? And you add them, you get 5. That's 2 and 3. So now we take the polynomial. The x squared plus 5x plus 6, we put that under the 1, 5, 6, and then we got 1, 3. That's 1x plus 3, which is x plus 3, and 1, 2 is 1x, or x, plus 2. We have a polynomial, p of x is x squared plus x minus 6, written as a tuple, 1, 1, negative 6. Because that leading number is 1, we just simply ask the question, what two numbers do you multiply together to get negative 6? You add them, you get 1. Well, that would be a positive 3 and a negative 2. And so we've got 1, 1, negative 6 is 1, 3 and 1, negative 2. The order is not important. You could have 1, negative 2 and 1, 3. So x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 1, 3 is x plus 3. And 1, comma, negative 2 is 1x, or x minus 2. Now, if we factor the next one, x squared plus x minus 7, we ask ourselves a question. Uh, is this possible? Uh, what do you multiply together to get 7? 7 and 1, that's our only possibility. So we've got here 7 times 1 is 7, and, and minus 1, that would be 6. You don't get x. So I don't think we're going to be able to factor this one by breaking up the number 7. 7 is a prime. We've only got one way. Here we have two polynomials. x squared plus 11x plus 24. And the other one's x squared plus 10x plus 24. In both problems, we have to ask ourselves the question, what two integers do you multiply together to get 24? In the first one, we have to add them to get 11. In the second one, we have to add the two numbers that give us 24 when we multiply them, we get 10. So we give it some thought. I don't think we want to use 24 and 1. We don't want to use 12 and 2. 
But 3 times 8 will be 24, and 3 plus 8 is 11. That will be the answer to the first one. And on the latter one, we got 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 plus 4 is 10. It does not matter about the order. So you, in the top one, you can do 1 comma 3 times 1 comma 8, or 1 comma 8 times 1 comma 3. But 1 comma 3, that's x plus 3, and 1 comma 8 is x plus 8. Below, 1 comma 6 is x plus 6, and 1 comma 4 is x plus 4. Now we come to a somewhat hard quadratic equation. P of x is defined to be 110 times x squared plus 353 times x plus 273 is equal to 0. We need to be able to factor 110, 353, 273, that tuple. Now, first times first, we got to find sets of numbers that when you multiply them together, you get 110. And our choices for the factors are 2, 5, and 11. So you could have 10 times 11. You could have 2 times 55. You could have 22 times 5. The 273, that's 3 times 7 times 13. So we could try 21 and 13. Uh, we could try 91 and 3. That's 7 times 13 is 91. You could try 39 and 7. There are all sorts of possibilities. So first times first got to be first, last times last got to be last. Any's plus eighties has got to give us the 353. Now the actual numbers at work are given below. 10 and 11 for the numbers that multiply together give you 110. And 13 and 21 are the numbers that when you multiply them together you get 273. And these are the ones that work because when you do 13 times 11, that's 143. You do 21 times 10, that's 210. 143 and 210 is 353. So now that we've got that, we have factored the quadratic. So we either have 10x plus 13 equal to 0, or 11x plus 21 is equal to 0. Now, 10x plus 13 is 0. Move the 13 to the other side, it's negative 13, and divide both sides by 10. Negative 13 over 10 is a negative of an improper fraction. So it's a negative. 10 goes into 13 one time. You got 3 left and 3 tenths. Now we do 11x plus 21 is 0. Let's move the 21 to the other side. It's negative 21. Divide by 11. So it's a negative number. 11 goes into 21 one time. You got a remainder of 10 over 11. Now here we have 2x squared plus 7x minus 15 is equal to 0. It might appear hard because we got a number other than 1 in front of x squared, but it isn't. So to factor the polynomial 2x squared plus 7x minus 15, or factor the tuple 2, 7, negative 15, 2 is a prime number. So we'll break that apart as 2 and 1. I left the other spots empty. Now we got choices for 15. We could do 15 and 1, or we could do 3 and 5, 5 and 3. If you finagle with it enough, you'll find that the magic numbers are going to be 2 comma negative 3 and 1 comma 5. And check this out. You have negative 3 times 1. That's any. That's negative 3. And 5 times 2 is 10. And if you add 10 and negative 3, you get the 7 and the 7x. And it's the minus 15. Now, so 2x squared plus 7x minus 15. You can write that now as with x is 2x minus 3. And 1 comma 5 is x plus 5 is equal to 0. So either factor is 0. So if 2x minus 3 is 0, move the 3 to the other side. 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. So x is 1 and a half. x plus 5 is equal to 0. Move the plus 5 to the other side. It's negative 5. So x is equal to negative 5. We have the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It is always given that x is equal to minus b, b is the coefficient of x, plus or minus the square root of b squared, and then after you do that, you do minus 4 times a, the coefficient of x squared, times c, the number by itself, and you divide all of that by 2 times a. This is called the quadratic formula. 
An example, given x squared plus 3x plus 2 is 0. And we're going to solve for x using the quadratic formula. And we notice that we have x squared, but 1x squared is the same as x squared. So a is equal to 1. The number times x is 3, and the number by itself is 2, and everything is on one side of the equal mark. So we simply plug in the numbers. X is equal to minus B minus 3 plus or minus. To square root of B squared, that's 3 squared, minus 4 times A is 1 times 2. So divided by 2 times 1. So what we have in there, X is negative 3 plus or minus. The square root of 3 squared is 9. And minus 4 times 1 times 2 is minus 8. And we're going to divide everything by 2 times 1, or 2. Now, what we have is minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 8, the square root of 1. And the square root of 1 is the positive number that you square to get 1, which is 1. And we're going to divide it by 2. We have two answers. Minus 3 plus 1 divided by 2. And we have minus 3 minus 1 divided by 2. Okay, minus 3 plus 1 over 2. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. So our two solutions are negative 1 and negative 2. Here we have square roots. So before we continue with the quadratic formula, which has a square root in it, we need to have a better understanding of square roots. Now, the square root of 9 is equal to the positive number that when you square it, you will get 9. And 3 is positive, and if you square 3, you do get 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. Can't use negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9, but negative 3 is negative. Square root of 2, it's a positive number. That when you square it, you'll get 2. So over on the right, the square root of 2, you might not know it, but if you square it, you will get 2. And the same square root of 3, it's a positive number. That when you square it, you'll get 3. So the square root of 3 squared is 3. We could keep doing this. The square root of 5 squared is 5. And... The square root of 10 squared is 10, and so forth. Now, the square root of 2 is equal to approximately, that's the equal mark of a circle or a dot above it, 1.414. If you square 1.414, you will get 1.999396. That's relatively close to 2. Similarly, square root of 3. And it's approximately equal to 1.732. Suppose somebody only used 1.7. Now, 1.7 squared. 17 times 17 is 289, so 1.7 squared is 2.89. You know, it might feel that that's not close enough, so we could keep estimating. I suppose we did the three decimal places, and we would have 1.732. If you square 1.732, that's equal to 2.999824. And that's pretty close to 3. The set of real numbers is the set of all decimal numbers. Now, integers are real numbers. As 2 is equal to 2.0. We could have negative 4 is negative 4.0 and so forth. Fractions in decimal form are either repeating decimal numbers or terminating decimal numbers. Here are some examples. Two sevens is equal to 0 0.285714, 285714, and repeats in those six digits. One-fifth is equal to 0 0.2, and then you could say 0000, zero, zero, zero repeating, but most people just say it's 0 0.2. Fractions are called rational numbers. Decimal numbers that do not repeat forever are called irrational numbers. Some examples. The square root of 2. The square root of 17. The number 0 0.10, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so forth. It has a pattern, but it does not repeat. Now, there is no real number when squared equal to negative 1. A positive number squared is a positive times a positive. You get positive. A negative number squared, a negative times a negative is positive. You will never get negative 1. We define the square root of negative 1 to be i. This means that i is the thing that you square to get negative 1. i squared equals negative 1. Now, 
the square root of 3 squared. The square root of 3 is the number that when you square it, you get 3. So we're squaring it. You get 3. The more difficult problem is, what's the square root of negative 3 squared? It's also negative 3, and here's why. With x a real positive number, the square root of negative x we will show is plus or minus i times the square root of x. We will square plus or minus i square root of x and see what we get. So down below we have plus or minus i square root of x, the whole thing squared, plus or minus squared, that's plus or minus 1 squared, that's 1. Then you're going to have i squared times the square root of x squared. i squared is negative 1, and the square root of x squared is x, because x is a real positive number. And so what we've shown is that when you square the square root of negative x squared, those things for it, you do get negative x. So for any real number, say wiggle, the square root of wiggle squared is wiggle. Now, when we did this but above, we got plus or minus i square root of x, and we would call the plus i square root of x the principal value. But where it takes place is below the square root of negative 9. You could put plus or minus i square root of 9, but what we're going to do is say by using the principal value, we take the plus value, so we take the negative out as i, and the square root of 9 is 3, so it's i3, or you could write it as 3i. In this example, we have x squared plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. We might try to factor it. The problem is, are there any two integers that you can multiply together to get negative 2, and you add them, you get positive 3? No. So we're going to proceed and use the quadratic formula. Now, again, 1x squared is x squared, so a is 1. The number times x is b. That's 3. And the number by itself, c, is equal to negative 2. We simply plug the numbers into the formula. Now, x is going to be minus b, minus 3, plus or minus the square root of. Then we have 3 squared. That's 9. And then you have minus 4 times a, 1, times c, negative 2. Now, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. So we have 9 plus 8, and that's 17. So, x is going to be now minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. We could leave our answer like this, but if we want to go ahead and write each one out, we would have minus 3 plus the square root of 17 over 2, and minus 3 minus the square root of 17 over 2. Now we have x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now, again, 1x squared is equal to x squared, so a is 1 b is negative 3 and c is 2. We plug them into the formula. x is equal to minus b. A minus a minus 3 is 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times 2 is c. And then we're going to divide by 2 times a or 2 times 1. Now, we have 3 plus or minus negative 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 times 1 times 2 is negative 8. And we divide everything by 2. So we have 3 plus or minus uh, the square root of 1, which is 1, divided by 2. We've got two answers now. 3 plus 1 divided by 2, and 3 minus 1 divided by 2. And this works out to 2 and 1. Now, in this example, we have x squared minus 3x plus 5 is equal to 0. Again, 1x squared is x squared, so a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is 5. When we plug it into the quadratic formula, we have minus a minus 3, that's 3, plus or minus, the square root of negative 3 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 5. This simplifies to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 20, everything divided by 2. And this is equal to, simplification, 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 11. Everything divided by 2. We take the negative out as i, so we have 3 plus or minus i, square root of 11, over 2. So there are no real numbers that make x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. But we do have complex numbers, two of them, that make it 0. In this problem, 
a little different than the previous ones. We're given that 3x squared minus 5x plus c is equal to 0. Now, that's an equation. If we just have 3x squared minus 5x plus c, that's a polynomial. We're to find the range for c such the roots of the quadratic equation are real numbers. If we had just had 3x squared minus 5x plus c, we could say find the range for c such that the zeros of the quadratic polynomial are real numbers. Now, in our case, a is 3, b is negative 5. We use the quadratic formula. x is going to be minus a minus 5, that's 5 plus or minus, the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times c, and it's divided by 2 times 3. We're concerned with, to make the numbers real numbers, that the thing under the radical, that's the square root symbol, must be positive or 0. So, minus 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times c must be greater than or equal to 0. If it's less than 0, we're going to have i in the answer. That's not going to be a real number. Equivalently. If we move the negative 5 squared, that's 25, to the other side, it's now negative 25. So we got negative 12 times C is greater than or equal to negative 25. We divide both sides by negative 12. We will change the inequality sign. So now C is less than or equal to negative 25 over negative 12. That's a positive number. 12 goes into 25 two times. You got one left, one twelfth. So our solution set, we could write in set notation. It's a set of C, that bar is called such that C is less than or equal to 2 and a 12, or it's all the numbers greater than negative infinity and less than or equal to 2 and a 12. Notice, a bracket on the right side means you include the endpoint. On the other side, it's a parenthesis. You can't get to negative infinity. It's the numbers greater than negative infinity. Complete the square, another method for solving quadratic equations. We see below, on the left, tuples. We have the tuple 1, 12, and we're after the number that we put after the 12, so that that is a square. The method is very simple. Half of 12 is 6. So 1, 6 squared is equal to 1, 12, 6 squared is 36, so that goes in that slot, and 1, 12, 36. Bring the 6 down. Move the 3 over to the 12, that's 15. Move the 1 over to the 1, that's 256. And sure enough, 16 squared is 256. Now, with equations, identical method. We have x squared plus 12x, and we're after what number do we add to that so that x squared plus 12x plus the number is a square. Half of 12 is 6. So we got x plus 6 squared. And the number is 6 squared. That goes in the slot after the 12x. So x squared plus 12x plus 36 is equal to x plus 6 squared. We have completed the square. Notice in these two problems, it was 1x squared at the start, and it was a 1 comma 12. A 1 is at the start in each problem. So we have a four problems with tuples in the corresponding problems with polynomials. You can click the screen and that will pause it and then you can continue the video and the answers are given in the next part. You can hear the answers if we work with the tuples first. Half of 18 is 9 and 9 squared is 81. Bring the 1 down. The 8 goes to the 18. That makes 26. Bring the 6 down. The 2 is added to the 1. That's 361. That is 19 squared. 1 negative 6, 9. Is that equal to 1 comma negative 3 squared? Add a 10 to the negative 3. Take away 1. That's 7 squared is 49. On the left-hand side, add 10 to the negative 6. Take away 1. That's 49. Okay, now we got 122, 121, half 22. That's the 11. 11 squared is 121. 1 comma 11. Move the 1 over. That's 21 squared. That's 441. Let's check it out. The 1 comes down. The 12 gets added to 22. That's 34. The 4 comes down. And the 3 gets added to 1 to make a 4. 441. The last one. Okay, half a negative 10. That's the negative 5. And negative 5 squared is 25. 
Add a 10 to the negative 5, take away 1. That's 5 squared. That's 25. Let's check it out on the other one. Bring the 5 down. The 2 gets added to negative 10. That's negative 8. Add a 10 to the negative 8. Take away 1 in the next column. That's 25. And we'll look at the x's, but we we'll do this a little differently. Same numbers, but think of x plus 9 squared as x plus 9 over x plus 9. And we're going to do vertical, vertical, crisscross. Makes it very simple. So, you got x squared, you got 81, and you go crisscross, you got 9x and 9x, and that's 18x. Do the next one. You got x minus 3 over x minus 3. The vertical is x squared. Another vertical is 9. Then you go crisscross, you got negative 3x and negative 3x, that's your negative 6x. x plus 11 squared, x plus 11 over x plus 11. x squared, 121, go crisscross. 11x and 11x, that's your 22x. And do the last one. x minus 5 over x minus 5. You got x squared, vertical, vertical, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, now you go crisscross, negative 5x, negative 5x, and that's negative 10x, a very quick way of checking your answers. In these problems, these are quadratic equations, but there's no x term. So in other words, the first equation, we have x squared plus 0x is equal to 9. They're relatively simple x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9, which is 3. Our next problem, x squared is equal to 49. So you could just say to yourself, what do you square to get 49? You might say 7, but also negative 7 squared is 49. So x is plus or minus 7. Our next problem, we have x minus 5 squared is 49. We say, well, wait a minute. The only th two things that you can square to get 49 are plus or minus 7. So that means that x minus 5 is plus 7 or minus 7. Move that negative 5 to the other side, change the sign. So x is equal to 5 plus 7, 5 minus 7. 5 plus 7 is 12, and 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Example 9 is very similar. We have something squared is equal to 81. Well, we know the two things that you can square to get 81 are plus or minus 9. So that means that 2x minus 3 is plus or minus 9. Move that negative 3 to the other side, change the sign. So 2x is equal to 3 plus or minus 9. 3 plus 9 is 12, 3 minus 9 is negative 6. Divide both sides of the equation by 2 to find x, so x is equal to 12 over 2, that's 6. Negative 6 over 2, that's negative 3. And this problem, we're going to complete the square. We start off with x squared plus 4x minus 7 is equal to 0. It does not factor. First step, move the negative 7 to the other side. Be sure to change the sign. So now we got x squared plus 4x is equal to 7. Half of 4 in the 4x is 2. That's the red arrow going down. Now, 2 squared is 4. That's the plus 4 that we see where the arrow goes to going up. We add 4 on the left side, we must add 4 on the right hand side of the equal. So now 7 plus 4 is 11, and by adding 4 to x squared plus 4x, we have made it a square, x plus 2 squared. So now we have x plus 2 squared is equal to 11. Something squared is equal to 11. That thing, x plus 2, is plus or minus the square root of 11. That's x plus 2. You've got to move that 2 over. So x is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. The square root of 11 is an irrational number. The decimals go on forever. They do not repeat. We'll just leave it as the square root of 11. In this equation, we have x squared plus 6x minus 5 is equal to 0. Does not factor. Move the negative 5 to the other side. Okay, x squared plus 6x is equal to 5. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. We add a 9 to the x squared plus 6x, and that makes x squared plus 6x plus 9, x plus 3 squared. We have completed the square. We added 9 on the left side, you add 9 on the right side, 5 plus 9 is 14. Something squared is 14. That thing, x plus 3, then is plus or minus the square root of 14. Move the 3 to the other side, change the sign, x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. There are two answers minus 3 plus the square root of 14, and minus 3 minus the square root of 14. Now we have x squared minus 3x minus 5 is equal to 0. Does not factor. 
move the negative 5 to the other side. Now, half of negative 3 is negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2 squared is a positive number. And 3 over 2 times 3 over 2, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, is 9 over 4. Divide 4 to 9, it goes 2 times. You've got 1 left and 1 fourth, so it's 2 and a fourth. So we've added 2 and a fourth to x squared minus 3x to make it a square. x minus 3 over 2 squared. And we also now must add 2 and a fourth to the 5, and that makes 7 and a fourth. So now what we have is something squared is equal to 7 and a fourth. That thing, x minus 3 over 2, is plus or minus the square root of 7 and a fourth. We could just move the 3 halves over and be done, but some people say you can't leave a, a denominator in the radical. So here we go. We do 4 times 7, that's 28, plus 1 is 29 over 4. And the square root of 29 over 4 is the square root of 29 over the square root of 4, which is 2. So we have x minus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. Move the negative 3 halves to the other side. It's positive 3 halves, which is 1 and a half. So now we have x is equal to 1 and a half plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. Now this video was just basics. We didn't do any word problems. And if we do word problems, then the video might be about 10 hours long. So I decided we're just going to learn how to solve quadratic equations. But there are many applications to such equations.